to learning literature with Purva. In today's video, we are going to discuss two very important literary movements, symbolism and imagism. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, then do subscribe to it and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. Let's begin our discussion with symbolism. So symbolism was a literary movement that was against both realism and naturalism. Symbolism originated in the late 19th century in France. So the late 19th century French writers, they reacted against the descriptive precision and the objectivity of realism and the scientific determinism of naturalism. In this sense, symbolism was first used by Jean Morris in La Figaro in 1886. Baudelaire's sonnets, correspondences, and Edgar Allan Poe's works are important precursors to the symbolist movement. Symbolism says that the absolute truth can only be described in the form of symbols and metaphors. The most notable work is Arthur Simmons' The Symbolist Movement in Literature published in 1899 that characterized the movement as the movement that is against realism and naturalism and the movement that attempts to spiritualize literature. In the modern age, after the First World War, we have literature that is dominated by symbolism. Many modern age writers such as T.S. Eliot and W.B. Yeats use symbolism in their works. Their works had a lot of symbols. We can see symbolism is used while referring to objects, settings and actions. Some great examples are W.B. Yeats' Sailing to Byzantium, Hart Crane's The Bridge, T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, Virginia Woolf's To the Lighthouse, James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake and William Faulkner's The Sound and the Fury. In The Wasteland, T.S. Eliot has used plenty of symbols. The fragmented nature of the poem itself is a symbol to show how fragmented the world has become. In the poem, water is used to symbolize birth, death and resurrection. Drought is again used as a symbol to signify death. The game of chess is used as a symbol to show the artificial relationship between human beings in the modern world. In W.B. Yeats, Sailing to Byzantium, again there are many symbols. Byzantium is the symbol of spiritual and intellectual realm. The old man, the aged man symbolizes the spiritual values that were important since the ancient times. But in the modern age, those values have become like a tattered coat upon a stick, which symbolizes the superficial nature of people. So there are plenty of symbols used in the poem. Then we can see so many symbols are used in the novel of Virginia Woolf to the lighthouse. So symbolism also influenced other art forms and we can see its effect in the music of Debussy and in the paintings of Van Gogh and Paul Gogan. Now we will talk about the next important literary movement, Imagism. Imagism was a successor of the French symbolist movement. Imagism was an early 20th century poetic movement that emphasized the use of clear, direct language. Imagism was a reaction against the Romantic and Victorian poetry that emphasized the use of excessively elaborate language. The images believed that language can be allegorical, language can be symbolical, but also it needs to be concise, it needs to be brief. So the images believed in sticking to the point. Early 20th century poets 
and authors such as Ezra Pound, Amy Lovell, Richard Altington, Hilda Doolittle, T.S. Eliot, James Joyce, William Carlos Williams and Ford Maddox Ford are all associated with the images movement. Literary scholars have traced the beginning of imagism to the poems of T. E. Hulme. Two particular poems of T. E. Hulme, namely The Autumn and The City Sunset, both published in 1909, are the foundational poems for the imagist movements. Both these poems have only a few words. So the economy of language can be seen in both these poems of T. E. Hulme, which inspired the imagist movement in literature. Now we will take a look at the features of imagism. Ezra Pound had written a few aesthetic poems about the characteristics of an imagist poem in the March 1913 issue of the poetry magazine founded by Harriet Munro. So the rules are, number one, direct treatment of the thing, whether subjective or objective. Number two, to use as few words as possible. Number three, to use less adjectives. No excessive use of metaphors, no metaphors that won't permit examination. And lastly, as regarding the rhythm, to compose in sequence of the musical phrase. So these are the characteristic of an images poem as stated by Ezra Pound. So Ezra Pound wrote an anthology called Des Imagistes, which was published in 1914. And all the poems in this collection are largely imagist poems. So basically in imagism, only a few words are used to describe the subject. It means as if the poet is painting a picture through words, but as few words as possible. The images wanted to be to the point. So they did not use excessive words, did not use excessive adjectives, excessive metaphors. So their poems are to the point. So that's it for today's video where we discuss two important literary movements, symbolism and imagism, very important literary movements of the modern age. I hope you found the video helpful. If you found the video helpful, then do like it and share with your friends. I'll be back very soon with a brand new video on a literary work. Till then, stay tuned to Learning Literature with Purba. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Also stay connected on Facebook and Instagram. Do visit our online academy www.learningliteraturewithpurba.com to discover online courses on English literature and creative writing. Thank you so much for watching.